I'm Mumtaz Abdullah, and I'm lead officer for the education and training sector in Saudi Arabia. And I'm sure that most of you know Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the largest uh, country in the Middle East. It occupies most of 80% of the uh, Arabian Peninsula is occupied by Saudi, by Saudi Arabia. It is the largest uh, economy in the Middle East and the largest in the Gulf uh, region. The budget population is around 30, percent, uh, 30 million and it is growing very fast. So it's a fast growing population. 70% uh, of the population are under the age of um, 30. So see the challenges that the government is facing, plus the opportunities. So it's a challenge as an opportunity. The budget this year was not so good as the last five years, but it is still one of the best budgets in the world. And I'm sure uh, you will say something similar about the UK. The budget this year is 152 billion pounds, which is um, and the, the expenditure. The revenue is 93, pound, uh, 93 million, a billion pounds. But there is a difference. You see, there is a deficit. And this deficit will be looked after through the SAMA uh, foreign assets. So there's no worry. Despite the oil prices, despite the war in the region, Saudi Arabia's economy is very strong. And take this for, for granted. 23% of the total budgets have gone to the education sector. So you see that the government is seriously looking into the development of human nature, human skills. They need to, to bridge that gap. Uh, we can see that the oil production is still high. There is an increase of 3%. There is, Saudi is the third largest reserves globally. And now the new trend, there is a national transformation program, which is going to be released very soon and this will be the roadmap to a number of social and economic initiatives to be undertaken in the next in the next five years so by 2020 there'll be a lot of changes through this national plan and i'll speak more about it in the next slides so what is the education update we said it's the largest and most populated country in the gcc so opportunities is huge uh, it is the high spender on education. 23% of the edu of the budget have gone to the education sector. In the last five years, we have been seeing around e two schools being built every day. And when I say every day, it is every day. Yeah. 25% uh, of the GCC students are based in KSA. So don't look into the UAE or the Bahrain or any market. You have to be in Saudi if you want that population, that business. Uh, 90, we, a lot of people are expected to go to the workforce, so there is an employment problem, uh, and the government is trying to solve that problem. We have also upgrading of schools, upgrading uh, old schools, building new schools, building sports centers, building universities. In 2005, we had only eight universities. At the moment, we have around 24 universities. So see that the government is really doing a lot to this sector. There is huge investment allocated to uh, human development, as I said. So that's a priority for, for the government. Uh, what are the education updates? Uh, uh, education updates, there's a merging of the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Higher Education. And this has, will result in better and quick decisions to be taken and in initiatives. Uh, there is also, as I said, universities have increased to 34, 24, 24 are public and 10 are private. Uh, institutes have gone up by 74%, including uh, private uh, universities and institutes. Total of graduates have risen. Numbers of schools have, uh, enrollment in schools have gone 440% from 1999 up to date. So you see the, the, the trend and, and, the need, and the need. We have the Kingdom 2020 strategy, we said the National Transformation Plan and I'll speak about it now. This is, the, uh, this is uh, the transformation plan or the vision for 2020. So the government is looking into to diversify the economy. So oil will not be the only thing to, for, the, uh, for the economy. They're looking to reduce oil dependence, create more jobs. We have a lot of Saudis stand, uh, st uh, studying abroad and we need jobs for those Saudis coming back. We need to support, they need to support the, fa uh, the future projects. They need to fight corruption. There's a lot of corruption anywhere in, 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 any, in any part of the world. Uh, the mining sector, looking into the mining sector, Saudi ha is the sixth, uh, uh, sixth globally in uranium um, uh, reserves in, in Saudi Arabia. So they're looking into the mining sector to make it one of the pillars of the economy. So there's huge opportunity in the mining sector. They're looking to um, 
if implemented uh, effectively, I think by 2020, we'll, we'll, Saudi will not be dependent on oil, we will not have unemployment, and we have surplus in the budget. And that's what I heard yesterday from your budget also, that by 2020, there will be some plus, uh, surpluses in the UK budget. So same thing in Saudi. Uh, and the ministry is looking into private, making privatization into the education sector, not only the education sector, also the healthcare. So privatization, they want to see the private sector in the driving wheel of the economy, and they'll give you all the incentives that is needed, whether you are an expat or you are a local. They want to see things made in Saudi. They want to see this made in Saudi. They don't want it to be made in China or in UK. So there is that trend, that vision. Uh, demand on Saudi IT specialists, they want, uh, IT, they want to bridge the uh, technology IT to meet the other industrial countries. So there is a lot of things going on here. What are the key organizations in the sector, in the education sector? If we are speaking about schools, we'll say that we're. That we're in, uh, are in English means um, development. So there was an organization that was established by King Abdullah Development Fund and Scott Totwir, and they are in charge of all education projects. Their main objective is like a triangle. They look at the buildings, at the teachers, and they look at the students. So it's a, tree, it's a, it's a triangle that they are in, interested in. Uh, the second one is technical vocational training. Technical vocational training had seen a lot of reforms recently. In 2013, 2014, the government have established a, an organization called Colleges of Excellency, where the UK have won around one billion worth of business by running um, colleges in Saudi under the PPP program, which is private uh, public partnership. And although there are some difficulties in this project at the moment, but I'm sure they will overcome it because it's a new project and it is it's facing some teaching problems, but it will be resolved. Uh, we have Ministry of Education. Ministry of Education. Uh, it should be a Ministry of Labor. So it should be a Ministry of Labor, and they are also looking into the technical vocational training in order to meet the gaps or to, to meet the market needs that is needed. So, what are also we have also another uh, organization which is called Saudi Skill Standards, and this was established in 2012 to look into all the assessment of the technical vocational uh, colleges that are uh, operating in Saudi Arabia, and they're working very closely with a number of UK companies like CT and Girls, uh, SQA, Alpha Plus, you name it. There is a number of uh, UK accreditation, accreditation bodies that are working very closely with the uh, SSS or Skill Saudi st st Standards. Then we have the National Occupational uh, Skill Standards, which is also another organization that are working into making a framework to look at the needs that is needed by this. Uh, the, and they, they work very closely with um, big organizations to see what are the needs so that they could provide the skills that is needed for that job. Main key players also, we have another organization which is called Public Education Evaluation Commission, and this comes directly under the king. So they, are, they don't report to the Ministry of Education or the Technical Vocational Training. They report directly to the king, and they are looking at the quality of all education. And they are also doing training of uh, teachers and evaluators to go around the schools, to go around the colleges, universities, to see the standard. Ministry of Labor is very active very active because she, they are facing a challenge which they see they want to meet the skills needed for the level for the for the market so they have initiated a number of uh, organizations like Drup, Tecamol, Irada and all these organizations are working into the development of the Saudi young Saudis to create jobs and I have seen last uh, year around 600 ladies been, uh, doing e-learning uh, on one of these programs in order to be able to, to work there. So it is very effective. What are the trends in education? As I said, the most important thing is the development of human uh, skills. So the human development is the main objective, is the priority. They want to see Saudi Arabia as a knowledge economy based, uh, knowledge uh, based economy. Uh, they want to train the teachers. Teacher training is on the top of the priorities, especially of the Tatwir. They focus on the vocational training, which is, we said, College of Excellency, uh, KS, KSP, HRDF, all these projects are running into the development of the, of the human development. International providers are there. As I said, there is a number of UK companies that are in um, partnership with the colleges to run colleges so that the standard of the education is high to international levels. 
uh, there is an increase in private international schools. We have seen a huge increase in private international schools, especially after the Saudis were allowed into international schools. Before they were not allowed. Now Saudis can join international schools. So there is a huge demand for that. The two, you know, the two, um, the two embassy, uh, ministries have come together, and this makes life easier, and the decision making is faster. Uh, what else do I, do I need to say? What have, did I did I miss anything here? No, I don't think I did. Okay. Other initiative is including of disabled students. They are taking into account that they have to do something for the disabled. And I have seen recently a, um, a joint venture between Aramco, which is the largest oil company in the world, with a UK uh, school, which is called Eagle House Consultancy, to run an autism center. So that's something new. And I think they are looking into this also for other uh, areas. The second uh, important thing is also the visually impaired. We are seeing partnership between a Saudi university, private university, and the Royal College of the Blind to form, uh, to do a, a joint program for the visually impaired. So there is, there is that need. Special needs education is becoming also a priority. Uh, E-learning, we said, because of the advantages that it provides, because people can access their learning anywhere, anytime. Women don't, don't have to drive, so they, don't, they can stay at home and do the, tra the, do the training. So there is a lot of things also. Although previously E-learning, distant learning was not accredited by the uh, Saudi government, but now it has been changing. Uh, we see massive open online courses, as I said. A lot of women have been doing these courses. We are saying bring your own device, and this is a, a new um, initiative that is taken by some of the schools where the students bring their own device. So by 2017, I think it will be in many of the schools, this initiative. Uh, and then allowing education to the labor market, which every country is looking at the, at the moment. We have a number of um, teach, we, well, I could say we have a number of people uh, specializing in geography, but we don't have engineers and we need engineers in the, in, in the country. So that's what the, the government and the Ministry of Labor are trying to do. So saying all this, saying all this, you see there are opportunities, but there are also challenges. The challenges is Saudi is not an easy market and you have to, be, to have three things in order to succeed in the Saudi market. Three Ps I call them. You have to have patience, you have to have persistence and you have to be price conscious. So these are the three main pieces that you have to put in mind when you want to do any business in Saudi. So there is opportunity for technology and solution providers, special needs education, we said it, uh, healthcare, a number of um, healthcare centers are being opened in hospitals, so there is a shortage of skilled uh, healthcare workers. Uh, training in power uh, sector, and I know that Aramco is going to establish two power academies in the next two years. We have the Marine, is also under Aramco, they're looking to open a Marine uh, college. Uh, partnership with Saudi universities, and I, have, I can give you an example here, which we had last year between um, University uh, Yuklan University and Umm al Qura, where they went into partnership into some of the programs to upgrade the programs, students exchange, uh, lecturers uh, uh, exchange. So it was a, a huge opportunity. And other universities are looking at, at these options too. Uh, it's a research driven uh, higher education. So there, there is research. There are two uh, techno valleys that have been established for research purposes. One is in Bahrain, it's called Bahrain Techno Valley, and the other one is in Riyadh, which is called the Sao King Saud uh, Techno Valley. Uh, as I said, mining, mining is very important and it's, becoming, it's going to become the third pillar of the economy. So what are Saudis looking for? What are they looking for? They are looking for niche goods and services. So they don't want any more glasses, they don't want any more normal paints, they want something that is niche that they can uh, add value to the economy. They are looking for quality, they are looking for innovation, they're looking for technology transfer. They want their, their young Saudis to uh, have that uh, knowledge, knowledge transfer. They need commitment. They don't want you to come and sell this and go. No, they want to see you in the country. They want to see your things made in the country. So they want to see that commitment. Uh, they want to make money. And it is a price sensitive market. Okay, it's a rich country, but it's still a price conscious market. So this is what the Saudis are looking for. So UKTI in Saudi Arabia. UKTI in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, we have three offices. One is in the capital, Riyadh, which is the largest city. 
and then we have one in the um, in Jeddah, which is the second largest city, commercial city, and the third one is in the eastern province where I come from, and it is mainly the oil and gas city. So we have three offices, and we have 24 consultants in the in the three offices, and each consultant or advisor is in charge of a sector. I cover the education and training. I have other colleagues that covered creative media, that create uh, railway, metro. So we have different ones. What are our services? I'm sure most of you know our services. We have full range of UK side services. We have uh, commercial, uh, chargeable, and non-chargeable. The non-chargeable is when you register on our portal and you become a member. So any opportunity that we find in the market, we post it on the portal and it will come directly into your inbox if you are registered. The, uh, the chargeable uh, services is called Overseas Marketing Introduction Service, where we give you a report with the contacts or it's tailored made to your, to your need. And it can cover either one region, two region, three regions, as uh, uh, whatever is the client needs. The third thing is a tread mission, where you join a tread mission, and we do for you a reception, a one-to-one -one, um, me meetings. And I think this has been very fruitful in the few in the last few years. We also make very uh, VIPs, as you see in the picture. We had uh, Prince Andrew with the Chamber of Commerce. This is the chairman of the Ch Chamber of Commerce. So we do have very good contacts. We are on the ground. We know what is happening, and we do have the contacts. So if you need us, please don't hesitate. We are here to help. Our main role is to help UK companies succeed in the market that we are in. And I think if you read up there, it says right now there are thousands of opportunities all over the world for UK businesses. The demand is out there. You could be too. To find your opportunities, search exporting is great. And I think this is, this is correct. So, these are some of the people that we work with. We work with the Chambers of Commerce. We work with the Saudi Industrial Development Fund. We work with the HRDF, which is the Human Resource Development Fund. And this is the organization that is the money, where you get the money to, um, for, all the, uh, for all the projects that is needed by the government, by the labor market. So we, are, we have also UK Education in KSA. UK Education has developed, we have strong relationship with the technical vocational training, with the British Council, we work together. We work with UK Education, UK Education. So what are the do's and do not in Saudi Arabia? As in any other country, there are some do's and do, do nots. So the first thing I'll send, you have to understand the decision making process is completely different to what you are used to. You might be in a meeting and, so, and the person you're meeting will be on his phone. It's not. This is not against you, it's a culture. So you have to accept it. You'll be in a meeting, somebody will just c come into the, uh, to the room and speak to the person you are meeting with. That's normal. That's nothing against you. Okay, so that, that's different. That's how we have to take it different. We have to invest in relationship. Relationship is very important. It's not what you know, it's who you know. That's why we say UKTI in the markets are very familiar with the people around them and they know the way they think. Yeah? Uh, we have to understand that corporate structure and identify the key decision maker. So you have to know who are the right people. Yeah? So that, that's a very important uh, note to take. You have to take legal advice. Legal advice is very important. And then visit, visit, visit. Patience, patience, patience. Persistent, persistent, persistent. And your, and your price market. Yeah? What don't you do? Don't sign up with the first partner you meet. Do your due diligence. Ask us on the ground. We are here to help. We are here to help. Don't expect email responses. Nobody will reply to your email. They want a phone call. Yeah, it's much easier. Uh, don't be hurry, we said. God willing, you'll always uh, hear people say, inshallah. That's God willing. And sometimes this means no, and sometimes it means yes. So you have to be very professional to know when it means yes and when it means no. So that's the inshallah word. Never generalize. There are a lot of differences between the, uh, the Gulf cities. There's difference in Dubai, in Bahrain, in uh, UAE, in Saudi. It's completely different. Uh, never think big is best for your products or service. Because if you're a very big company like Aramco and you're a small company, they will not be interested. Okay, they'll give you the time, but not the time that you really need. So look for the right partner. Always look for the right partner. Upcoming events. We have an event coming next month. It's called Ta'lim, which is an exhibition, the largest uh, education show in Saudi Arabia. And it will be under the patronage of the king. So if you have a chance to, to visit it, you are most than welcome. Uh, yes, th this is the only thing. And 
as I said, I'm Mumtaz Abdullah, the Senior Trade and Investment Advisor for Education and Training. Here is my contact, my emails, and also we have the Education uh, UK Education Head Med, Med Child, which is based in the UK.